All right, so in this video, we're going to walk through the process of solving a radical equation. Now, the process works somewhat similarly, regardless of whether you're doing a cube root or a square root or whatever. Um, you're going to raise to the power that is related to the power of the root. So if you have a square root, we're going to square. If you have a cube root, you're going to cube and so forth. So um, there are some things that you have to do, though, to make it possible to simplify as you go. Now, if possible, you want to be able to get the root on one side of the equation by itself and everything else on the other side of the equation. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to move the x over to the other side of the equation and leave the square root by itself. So we have the square root is now equal to x. Now, when I square both sides of the equation, I don't have to worry about foiling and cross terms and things like that. So now I can square both sides. Again, algebra basically says you could kind of do whatever you want as long as you do it to both sides. Uh, and it's algebraically valid. Now, on the left side, the square and the square root are going to cancel. And I'm going to be left with 8 minus 2x is equal to x squared. Now, to solve a quadratic equation, I have to have everything on one side so that I can either factor or... Um, complete the square, use the quadratic formula or whatever. Um, so I'm going to move the everything to one side of the equation. Since I want x squared to stay positive, I'm going to put x squared. Uh, I'm going to move the 2x over as a plus 2x. And then when I subtract the 8 over, I'm going to get minus 8. And if I do that, I'm technically at 0 equals blah, blah, blah. But the zero doesn't have a sign, so it doesn't care what side it's on. Now that I have it in this form, I can try to factor. There are factors of eight which have a difference of two, and I'm going to need four to be positive. Eight and four and two. So four times two is going to, this is going to give me negative eight because that's a negative two, but 4x minus 2x is going to give me plus 2x. So this is what I want. And so I'm going to get x equals negative 4 and positive 2. But there could be extraneous solutions here because this, once I square it, it doesn't care what the sign was on either of these uh, sides of the equation. I've killed any sign information. So probably at least one of these does not work. So I need to check both solutions in the original problem. So my original problem, I'm going to start by plugging in negative 4. So negative 4, negative 4. Let's see what happens if I simplify this side of the equation. I'm going to get uh, negative 2 and uh, negative 4 multiplied together is going to give me positive 8. And negative 4 and ne another negative is going to give me plus 4. But that's going to give me the square root of 16, which is equal plus 4, which is equal to 4 plus 4, which is equal to 8, which is not equal to 0. So that's not good. So let's go back and try again with the other solution. If I plug in... 2 and 2, well, this side of the equation is going to simplify to, well, 2 times 2 this is going to give me 4. 
and eight minus four is gonna give me the square root of four minus two, and the square root of four is two, and two minus two is zero. So this checks out. So I have to kill this solution. That's not viable. We'll mark it in red. And so the only solution is actually x equals two. Now, one way that you can verify that this works is by going to a program like Desmos and uh, seeing how your equation, your radical intersects with your x. So let's actually check that out. So what I've done is I've actually plotted this relationship right here. Now, um, when you do that, essentially you're going to graph the radical y equals this radical equation, and then also y equals x. You could do this all in one go and see where it equals zero, but usually I find that it's a little easier when you think of it as an intersection rather than an intercept. And when you do that, the graph you get is gonna look like this. So here's that radical, and I want it to be equal to x. Where is that the case? It's gonna be the case when x is equal to two. Now, where is the negative four coming from? Well, it's actually coming from the bottom half of the square root. So again, if this was a sideways parabola, then this would be a complete parabola and not just the top half of the parabola. And this parabola, if it were to continue in a non-functiony kind of way, uh, there would be a negative version of it, of the square root. And then that would intersect down here at negative four. But in our problem, we only have the positive square root. So we only have the top half of that parabola and not the bottom half. And so this is the only intersection. There isn't a second intersection over here.